All right, good evening. I'm going to call this meeting to order. Uh, as we get started tonight, I want to welcome you. Uh, if this is the first time you are here, I want to just walk through some expectations about our agenda and process to ensure that everyone who wants to speak has an opportunity to be heard without being interrupted. So this is an official city meeting with city business to be conducted. So we'll start the meeting with an opportunity for comment on very specific action items. And then we'll move through a number of items uh, to vote on. And then after that, there will be an opportunity for public comment at the end. For public comment, we have a number of meeting procedures and expectations. We ask that you come to the podium, which is right up here, that you share your name, the city that you live in, and you'll be provided three minutes to speak. We want to ensure that this is a safe place for everyone and ask that you refrain from clapping and cheering, booing, using profanity, vulgar language, threats, name calling, or making derogatory comments. These actions are disruptive to the meeting and can inhibit free speech of others. If you use profanity or vulgarity, the microphone will be shut off for the remainder of your time. If there is disruptive actions or breach of peace, I'll ask the individual or individuals to stop, and if it continues, they will be asked to leave. Public comment is an opportunity for all voices to be heard, despite whether people in attendance or those of, up, uh, those of us up here as elected officials agree or disagree with what is being said. People have a right to speak without being screamed at, criticized, or disrupted by other people in attendance. And despite your own opinion, personal beliefs, or values, people have a right to come and speak about whatever topic they wish, including their religious beliefs, whatever they may be. So again, this meeting is a lawful assembly of the governmental body. Disrupting the meeting is committing a breach of peace and is a misdemeanor under state law. So with that, we'll get started, uh, and we'll start with a moment of silence before moving to a Pledge of Allegiance. All right, thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, and next we will have roll call. Commissioner Moody. Present. Commissioner Jones. Here. Commissioner O'Connor. Present. Commissioner Sassi? Present. Commissioner Ruppart? Here. Commissioner Lanier? Right. Mayor Bliss? Yes. All right, and next I'll take an opportunity to introduce our interpreter. So if you are here tonight and you need assistance with interpretation services, please let us know. Good evening. Hi. Hi. We are pleased to provide Spanish interpretation services this evening during the meeting and for those who want to provide public comment. Buenas noches. Nos complace ofrecer servicios de interpretación esta noche durante la reunión y también si quiere proveer com uh, comentario público. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next will be our first opportunity for public comment, and this is specifically on agenda items. So again, we ask you to come up, share your name. And on this uh, opportunity for public comment, we ask that you be specific about what action item you're speaking about. Hello, my name is Emma. Um, I will speak, be speaking on several from the fiscal committee and then, what's it called? The items to be removed from consent. Um, I'll jump around a little bit. Um, number six, fiscal. Um, 180 for mental health crisis co-response program. Um, while I do want that money to go for mental health crisis, the co-response program itself um, is not good. Is it unacceptable that police be anywhere near those experiencing mental health or substance abuse crisis? Um, for context, this being that police respond to substance abuse and mental health crises. Um, police are a law enforcement, therefore punitive in an institution. Officers have been get conditioned to respond to situations with force, and no amount of collaborating or training can change that. If it did, the institution of policing would no longer be policing. Police are known to enact violence on these type of situations, especially um, those with BIPOC members of the community. Um, okay, I'm going to go to items to be removed from consent, and I'm the only one, um, uh, concerning the cannabis industry equity. Um, 
particularly I wanted to address um, Commissioner Lanier about this. Um, you were particularly fierce in advocating for equity in this policy um, and acknowledging power structures um, and even brought up about the non profit industrial complex. Um, there was true passion for the needs of the public and real expression of frustration. But where is this fire for justice and policing and other community needs? I last spoke to you, you when I was last up here, um, the whole body, about showing humanity. And I remember looking in your eyes and looking at me and I felt like a chink um, in your exterior. Um, I thought I saw some understanding in your eyes and I hope this means that I am right. Um, quote, you said today, Paying for equity is the equivalent of modern day slavery. People can treat the oppressed in whatever way they can possibly see fit when they have the financial resources to do so. That is very correct. So you agree that when we fund the police, it empowers them to continue oppression. Um, if you do understand the power dynamics, um, then I urge you to do anything you can to advocate for justice, even if you may say, face the consequences like loss of political support or monetary support. Okay, number four, fiscal. Um, 75,000 um, in creating the eligibility specialist for eviction diversion program. There needs to be more. I work for SARA, um, that program's ending soon. Um, there's, the resources are exhausted, like more needs to be done for homelessness. All right, others switch here. How you doing? Uh, I'd like to talk about the um, funding for the 75,000 uh, for the eviction prevention program. Uh, the King County, uh, I wanna thank the King County Treasurer because he actually reached out to me because when Commissioner Denier was talking about um, the funding that um, housing, um, that the city could get for, for potentially selling houses that are foreclosed. Uh, he actually reached out to me and let me know that there's a $25,000 grant that uh, at the state level that people can get for um, evictions and to be able to pay their bills if they own their home. And, and so uh, just to let people know that's out there or to let the uh, eviction program specialists that eventually get that job, letting them know that those resources are out there to make sure that People aren't, uh, if they are on the verge of eviction, that there's a $25,000 grant that they can get to be able to sustain their home and potentially catch up on bills. Um, I also would like to talk about the care violence funding. Uh, definitely in support of that. Uh, definitely would like to see the technical uh, assist assistance for that. Uh, I recently talked to the state police, uh, GRPD. Um, some people from the sheriff's department about esports and having that as a creative outlet. So I've talked to our chief of police. I've talked to some people at the uh, state police, one of the lieutenants, when they were here at the Hispanic Festival, and let them know about that initiative. I think it'd be pretty cool to have community partners and also care violence with the police playing video games with kids, um, kids that usually aren't in, in the community that's um, more vulnerable to get in trouble um, and being able to just reduce violence and create a better sense of community because care violence um, has been helping me with uh, the Urban Youth Summer Basketball League. Um, one of the guys from care violence actually helped recruit majority of the kids and I just kind of filled in from the sponsorships, being able to get uh, funding for kids that weren't able to play or being able to pay the fees and so um, Definitely support the work of Care Violence in the Urban League because they definitely contribute um, just not to the reduction of violence, but the peace treaty, but also um, just being able to um, help the community and help our youth uh, that are on the southeast side, the south side, um, doing activities. So please keep that in mind. Esports, police department, community engagement, another way to engage in the community that's not physical but something that kind of brings people from all different walks of life because i know some of our police officers in our community play video games i've talked to them i've had those conversations and it'll be a creative way that um the city could also utilize the space with parks and recreations thank you i appreciate it thank you all right others wish to be heard good evening lucas leverett First Ward, there's an item on the agenda tonight that most people don't talk about. It's the minutes from the previous meeting on the 26th. There are several glaring exclusions from that that I'd like to call to your attention before you vote this evening to approve those minutes. 
Nowhere in these minutes are the public comments or commissioner's comments addressed. This means the official record of last meeting does not include the fact that despite the bootlicker brigade laying plans to take over this chamber, they were outnumbered in public comment 29 to 4. Or that various speakers complimented you, Mayor, on your improved responses to minor infractions by the crowd. There will be no record in the minutes of John O'Connor managing to still absurdly adhere to his personal brand of holster-sniffing silence. Most importantly, there will be no record of Commissioner Yusazi taking a page out of John's book and arguing with a heckler like a high school cafeteria shouting match. <laughs> Commissioner, I've had an email in to both you and Ms. Lanier for over two weeks now with no response on the issues within. Of course, I never got anything back from you two last summer when I was contacting you about much less dire police issues. I can't imagine the rage the actual communities have affected the most by your evasive governance must feel. Normally, this is the part of the meeting where I'd employ or implore all of you to consider making changes, but I've submitted to you volumes and volumes of suggestions. And all you've done is give a few of them minor lip service. There's a narrative among you that those of us who come here to dissent are all the same and that we're part of some kind of organized demon squad serving a liberal overlord and we just want to come complain and never contribute any solution. But there is 20 pages that prove you wrong or that you're lying. Take your pick. I've expressed that I prefer to partner up and not fight. Many of you have shown that you'd rather slow walk change and wallow in political cowardice than improve your process, communication, or discourse. These meetings are increasingly viewed as an embarrassment to this city. And you want to talk about embarrassment? Be new here and have people ask you from home. WTF. The buck stops with you on that. So far, you haven't acted like you're capable of rising to the challenges of the times, and you can do better. Maybe you should stick a line in the minutes about the fact that a way more diverse array of critics have come to you than you would admit, and we show up every time and ask you to lead. Okay. Others wish to be heard? Okay, this is regarding the 225,000 to cure violence. Cure violence aims only to address social norms <clears throat> and behaviors that contribute to violence. While this type of intervention is necessary, it still does not address root causes. A model such as this, which still places the responsibility on solving social problems on these those suffering the most in inequitable and ineffective, placing priority on fulfilling dire community community needs such as housing, food access, health care, child care, and education. In conjunction with addressing behavior is much better approach. In why do you guys have to be told that? That addressing community needs is what will lower violence, what will lower the need for somebody to go out in do those things that nobody wants to do because they have to eat at the end of the day or they have to pay rent at the end of the day. That's what's going to lower violence, is addressing the needs of your people by giving them adequate education, by giving them adequate housing, fair cost housing, by giving them adequate food, good food, good nutrition. That is what is going to stop the violence in your streets. People won't have to reach out to other people to loan money and then be in debt and then cause anger and then cause feuds and then cause gun violence. <laughs> it's, it's very, so, so very simple. You guys shouldn't have to be told this because at one point or another, you guys went to school with other people and you saw it. Who were those acting violently? Who were those acting out in school? The kids who didn't get any food but at school. The kids who had parents arguing at home, and why were they arguing? Because of the stresses of life, right? And then those kids take it to school, and they feel the burdens of life that they shouldn't have to. So why are you guys needing to be told how to cure violence when you know how to cure violence? But instead, you put $225,000 into some 
organization that's going to go and do a couple out outreach programs, but it's not going to address that kids are still going to bed hungry. That they're going to go to Walgreens and they're going to steal a loaf of bread and then they're going to be forever in your perpetuating system of going into juvie and then to jail because I was one of those kids, right? I was one of those kids. So that's how you're going to stop violence. You shouldn't have to be told this. You're not children. Thank you. All right, others wish to be heard? Hello, my name is Shannon Tannis and I'm from the First Ward. Um, I'll be speaking on the Fiscal Committee Action Item number four, uh, the eviction um, amount for $75,000, um, the prevention program. Uh, I appreciate this. Um, I've looked at the attached mechanisms within the agenda item um, and that the 61st district is attached. I'm concerned because I've already spoke to you about that my home was unlawfully stolen from me by denial of due process per MCL 600.3201 and no one has properly engaged me from this body about this matter. Okay, and the fact that evictions only deal with rental aspects and they don't deal with the fraudulent mismanagement of bar members and the predisposition that caused people to be evicted. Okay, especially if they own the home. Apparently, someone doesn't understand what a competent jurisdiction means, okay? I'm glad in this communication that someone has realized the difference between federal funding and state funding and that some things do not mix and they have disattached that from this mechanism. And I'm curious also about the $75,000. Is this within the um, formula that the state already does that 75% of its um, cost is supplied by federal and 25% is by state. So is this 50% within that 25%? I mean, can we get more of a transparency on this um, aspect? Um, and instead of being vague um, and making it look like one thing versus another. Um, and proper engagement about these deficiencies of um, fraudulent practices by bar members. I don't get why you can't understand that we have bar members that have been acting like rogue agents with special interest in misinforming you with fraudulent information and because everybody is used to them telling them and acting like they know everything, they have misguided you. So I implore you to go look at that MCL and see what it says. Okay, I can give you documentation that my home was processed as a first time home buyer community grant for Mishta loan, okay, and covered by FHA. Okay, I can give you every point of oversight from the federal and state that these things were supposed to be applied in a judicial process and they were not. And your deputy sheriff that is doing the foreclosures also is just a service processor. He really isn't a law enforcement officer. Okay, so he's posing, okay? There's more vetting that needs to be done with the civil board in these matters. Thank you. Thank you. All right, again, this is public comments on agenda items that we're voting on. Good evening. Good evening. Mayor Bliss and commissioners. Uh, Daniel Scutt, resident of Grand Rapids uh, over 35 years and more importantly, a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. I would just like to uh, address Committee on the Whole, uh, number one. Resolution approving the request for uh, one beer at a time, et cetera, et cetera. I live near this area, and I voice my opposition to this resolution. Just drive or walk in that neighborhood and you will see the homeless and the poor that are already struggling with this addiction. This is what the word of the Lord in the Christian Bible says, woe to you that give your neighbor strong drink, 
you will be filled with disgrace rather than honor. Shameful spewing will be upon you. Secondly, uh, resolution number five. I guess this was taken off the agenda, but if I can just express my opposition, opposition to any marijuana use in the city. Uh, I've been ministering in the city, as I've mentioned before, almost 42 years in the Heartside neighborhood. And I see firsthand almost every day the total destruction that marijuana and other drugs has on the population there. And in that sense, our whole city. The word of the Lord says, the Christian Bible admonishes us to love our neighbors and do good to them, not to, contri not to contribute to their destruction. Thank you. Thank you. All right, commissioners, we'll go ahead and move to approval of the minutes. Uh, can I get a motion? So move. Support. All right, moved and supported. Commissioners, any questions or comments? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? It carries. All right, next that will take us to petitions and communications, and we have one item tonight. The first one is communication from John Helmholt regarding their resignation from the Smart Zone Local Finance Development Authority. All right, that's referred to our Committee on Appointments. That'll take us to reports of city officers. First one is Comptroller's report for the period of July 13 through July 26, 2022, in the amount of $41,124,505.03. That is received and filed. And the Treasurer's report for the period of July 13, 2022, through July 27, 2022. And that is also received and filed. All right, next that will take us to our consent agenda. Commissioners, can I get a motion for the consent agenda? So moved. Support. All right, moved and supported. Uh, any questions or comments? All right, seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? It carries. All right, next that will take us to items removed from consent, and we have one item before us tonight. It is a resolution to consider amendments to the City Commission Policies 900-58 MyVita and 900-59 Cannabis Social Equity Policy, CICEVA, to further articulate the compliance procedures and to temporarily extend enforcement of compliance with local cannabis industry commitments to City Commission Policies 900-58 and 900-59 until December 31, 2022. Support. All right, moved and supported. Commissioner Jones, you want to tell us about this? Yes, Mayor. Uh, back on December 4th of 2018, uh, we the Commission approved zoning ordinance text amendments to allow medical cannabis uses and adopt the City Commission Policy 900-58 Marijuana Industry Voluntary Equitable Development Agreement, or MIVIDA. Subsequently, on July 7, 2020, City Commission approved zoning ordinance text amendments to allow certain recreational cannabis uses and adopt the City Commission Policy 900-59 Cannabis Social Equity Policy effectuated via the Cannabis Industry Social Equity Volunteer Agreement, or CICEVA. Uh, these social equity policies in alignment, well, are in alignment with the City of Grand Rapids strategic plan. Uh, cannabis business applicants uh, voluntarily offered social equity commitments under MyVita and or CICEVA uh, with medical and or recreational cannabis special land use applications. Uh, these selections provided priority of consideration in zoning reviews. Uh, on April 26th of this year, City Commission was briefed by City staff on the current landscape of social equity compliance by the local industry. Three options to address the general low level of compliance were brought forward, with staff recommending one of those options as a proposed pathway to achieve the city's equity goals under both MyVita and SISEVA. The recommended option would allow for the transfer of commitments between certain social equity categories, including a transfer option in the form of monetary contributions to the community reinvestment fund managed by the city created nonprofit. All right, thank you, Commissioner. Commissioners, any questions or comments? All right. Uh, we'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay. Uh, I'll do that with hands again, just like I did this morning, just to make sure our clerk gets it right. All those in favor, raise your hand. Okay. Those opposed? Okay. Passes on a 4-3 vote. All right, commissioners, that will take us to ordinances to be adopted, and we have five of them tonight. The first one is the ordinance amending section 3.2 of ordinance 2019-53, range change community development director. So moved. 
All right, moved and supported. Commissioner O'Connor, you want to tell us about this? Yes, thank you, Mayor. This is uh, part of a reorganization of the Community Development Department. Uh, both this item and I believe the next item uh, relate to that. Uh, it was recommended to us to change the uh, range uh, for the Community Development Director, uh, and this was approved by the Civil Service Board. Great, thanks. All right, questions or comments? All right, this is a roll call vote tonight. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Commissioner Asasi? Yes. Commissioner Repart? Yes. Commissioner Lanier? Aye. Mayor Bliss? Yes, it carries. All right, that will take us to our second ordinance. Uh, ordinance amending section 4.2 of ordinance 2019-56 new classifications, assistant code compliance director and assistant community development director. So moved. Support. Support. All right, moved and supported. Uh, Commissioner Asasi, who serves on our civil service board, you want to tell us about this? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, as Commissioner O'Connor just noted, this is um, these are new positions, so there's not an old range, there's a new range, um, essentially to shift some of the departmental duties, um, to sort of spread out some of those managerial responsibilities. Um, and it was also created and are aligned with other assistant director positions with a pay range of 20. All right. Commissioners, any questions or comments? All right, there's a roll call vote. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Commissioner Sassi? Yes. Commissioner Repart? Yes. Commissioner Lanier? Aye. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Mayor Bliss? Yes, it carries. All right, that will take us to our third ordinance tonight. That is a salary ordinance for a new seasonal classification fire cadet. So moved. Support. All right, moved and supported. Uh, Commissioner Moody, you want to tell us about this? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. This uh, salary ordinance would establish a classification for fire cadet which it would provide for experiences in a broad range for the fireworks that uh, firefighters do. Uh, the opportunity would increase exposure to technical skills and values of the Grand Rapids Fire Department, and it will assist in the development, which will create a pipeline for future firefighters. This classification and salary range was approved by the Civil Service Board on July the 26, 2022 of this year. All right. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioners, any questions or comments? All right, there's a roll call vote tonight. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Commissioner Sassi? Yes. Commissioner Rappart? Yes. Commissioner Lanier? Aye. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Mayor Bliss? Yes, it carries. And commissioners, can I get a motion to give this immediate effect? Vote. Support. Support. All right, moved and supported. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? It carries. All right, that'll take us to our fourth ordinance tonight. That is the uh, salary ordinance for emergency communications operators. So moved. Support. All right, moved and supported. Commissioner Rappart, you want to tell us about this? Yes, thanks, Mayor. This is a um, uh, the result of our bargaining with this, this group of 35 employees, and it and it outlines their wage increases for the next three years at 4%, 3%, and 2%. All right, thank you. Commissioners, any questions or comments? All right, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Asasi? Yes. Commissioner Rappart? Yes. Commissioner Lanier? Aye. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Mayor Bliss? Yes, it carries. All right, and that will take us to our last ordinance tonight. A salary ordinance for emergency communication supervisors. So moved. Oh. Support. All right, moved and supported. Uh, Commissioner Lanier, you want to tell us about this? Sure, Mayor. This is similar to the previous. This is Teamsters Local 406 which are the emergency communication supervisors, which includes five employees, um, and this is the renewal of their contract. All right, thank you. Commissioners, any questions or comments? All right, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Lanier? Aye. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Commissioner Asasi? Yes. Commissioner Ruppert? Yes. Mayor Bliss? Yes, it carries. All right, that will take us to our last opportunity for public comment tonight. Uh, same rules apply. We ask that you come forward, share your name, the city that you live in, and you'll be given up to three minutes to speak. Lucas, First Ward, due to recent events, I brought my bleeper. <laughs> I hated to miss the last meeting. You understand, right, Mr. O'Connor? Sometimes you just have to leave town and be conveniently unavailable for media inquiries. You did show up last meeting and took your requisite verbal beating from the crowd, but now it's my turn. You've run away from engaging with constituents, and since you deleted it once I put pressure on you, you ran away from Facebook too, I guess. You run 
like you're running from GRPD. Guess it's a good thing I don't respond the way they do. Speaking of running, you ducked out of this chamber last month in a cursing tantrum and is now famous, you cussed me by name. <laughs> Off, Lucas. Jesus Christ, I'm done with this. <laughs> Cuss me. Almost nothing offends me. But the way you got away with it, the same way your police puppet masters get away with things, that's the <laughs> part. Let's talk numbers. As promised, I made sure you got plenty of social media attention. Your antics and my media interviews landed over 25,000 impressions with a potential reach of more than 2.5 million people. That's pretty impressive. And that's not counting TV viewership on live air. You use tax dollars to whip up a disingenuous <laughs> apology in which you dodged the real issues and blamed everybody else, but you haven't apologized to me despite using my name. So what now? The GRPD and the city attorney refused to press charges against you when you committed the same misdemeanor that the mayor threatens us with when I complained. So I filed a criminal complaint with the Michigan Attorney General instead in an election year. What else? I've owned BoycottLongRoadDistillers.com and BoycottLongRoad.com for several weeks now. Just been sitting on it. I've got the pricing for that billboard above the mitten, too. Maybe we need some messaging about you in those places. Maybe we need a recall campaign. I'm not sure what happens next, John, because the ball's been in your court for like a year now, and I didn't want to do this. It never had to be this way. My door's still open if you've got the guts to talk and lower the temperature, homie. Your <laughs> move. <laughs> All right, others wish to be heard. Good evening, my name's Colleen, I'm from Grand Rapids, and I'd like to thank you for being here. Um, I'd like to propose, well, since Governor Whitmer has issued a TRO against county prosecutors um, prosecuting abortionists, I've had to revamp and try to find another way to help the unborn and those that are born. So I propose safe haven baby boxes. Um, I know you care about protecting our community, this organization strives to protect women in crisis and their infants as they work to end infant abandonment. Safe Haven Baby Boxes provides a safe and legal location for anonymous surrender of an infant. Anonymity is the absolute essential component to protecting women and their infants because it allows them to do what is best for their situation without fearing that they would be recognized. The Baby Box is a sophisticated device featuring climate control and a silent alarm system that notifies first responders of a surrendered infant. The infant will be attended to within five minutes, medically evaluated, and adopted. We have seen how providing Baby Boxes in communities is changing the narrative on abandonment. In the state of Indiana, they have seen deadly abandonments drop to zero. This organization has seen, since 2017, this organization has seen 19 surrenders via Baby Box and over 121 via National Crisis Hotline 1-866-91-BABY-1. They have seen these infants be adopted by amazing families and have watched them grow into toddlerhood. They can't wait to see what these children who have been given a better chance go on to do in their lives. I hope this community will invest in this opportunity to protect women in crisis and their infants. These baby boxes will be placed at fire stations, police departments, and hospitals. In 2018, then Governor Snyder vetoed a bill to provide these boxes because he thought it was inappropriate for parents to just put the baby in a box when they could hand the baby over to fire stations, hospital, and police departments. He was completely out of touch with how a woman would feel doing this. These baby drop boxes would cost the city absolutely nothing. Funding for these boxes would be raised through fundraising. 
I truly hope you give this close consideration, and I want to thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. All right. Others wish to be heard? My name is Cindy Hicks, and I live on the southeast side. Um, I would never want a baby box in my yard or near it. I would, I would like housing and support services and resources for people so they don't have to, like, feel like they have to give their babies away. And, and livable wage jobs. And I was sitting in my car before I got in here and thinking about um, how long it's been, um, that it's been more than four months. I wasn't sure, like, do we count April or we don't count April? I mean, it was um, since Patrick Leoya was murdered by a police officer. And I was just, you know, thinking about how triggered I felt, you know, um, the car that Patrick was in. I remember that car in front of my rental property. I remember Patrick. I remember his face. My, how so many people who've touched my life, who've been part of my life, are dead or deported or beaten because of police violence. But yet there's budgets continuing to increase how much we give them. And one of my um, Afro-Latina friends, who is a person of the cloth, visited me. And we walked outside, and um, we did video it. There is police surveillance now in the park across the street from my home, watching me with the light facing my direction. It's so disgustingly gross to be under this kind of police surveillance. And at least I have, you know, friends that have credentials that can verify and validify who I am as a human being because the city of Grand Rapids, and to me, most all of you people up there only care about what's in your best interest. It certainly isn't what in the best interest of our neighbors or my neighborhood where it's 98% elderly and non-able-bodied people are now gonna have a liquor license. I mean, why not just, you know, blow a whistle and let the cops just come in and beat everyone and arrest everyone now? I mean, what are we waiting for? It's going to be a, what, a few years spread, and my neighborhood will be completely gentrified because nobody really, you know, gives a F. Oh, I didn't say the F word. Nobody really gives a damn about anybody, you know, living or dying. It's just about making a buck. With that, I'm done. Thank you. All right, others wish to be heard. Hi, welcome. Good evening. America is drowning in a sea of lies from oh, I'm politics. Sorry. I'm sorry, can you start with your name? Sure, Viola from Grand Rapids. America is drowning in a sea of lies from politics to religion. My Bible warned that there would be an age of great deception. Take heed that no one deceives you. The Greek word for deception is to cause to roam away from safety, away from truth or virtue, to go astray. Man, religious organizations and our government that have been seduced and led astray from the truth. We are living in a time when those that speak the truth are hated and silenced. The offense of the mind reveals the heart. Jeremiah the prophet said the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. That means that it must be restrained, and without restraint, it becomes crooked and perverse. Proverbs says the way of the guilty is crooked. The crooked way leads to evil deeds, destruction, and ultimately death. Evil is restrained by conscience, parents, government, and our police, God-ordained authority. The government has been given the sword to punish those that do wrong and reward those that do good. They are his servants to execute wrath on the wrongdoer. But when the power structures have been led astray and led into error, they pervert their power by rewarding evil and punishing good. 
an upside down world where they make heroes out of criminals and persecute our police. They create laws and policies that destroy all that is right and oppose all that is good. They work against our police by stripping them of their power to restrain evil and they honor the wicked. We need to tear down the lies. The truth is, Patrick Leola was arrested over and over and over again. From driving under the influence, domestic violence, unlawful driving away, driving with a suspended license, hindering and opposing a police officer, his crooked path led him to that fateful, fateful encounter with Officer Schur. The evil deeds of Patrick led to a deadly consequence. Okay. It was Officer Christopher Schur that encountered evil that day and fought for his life. Okay. Her, That's the truth. Speak, even if you don't it's agree with It's ugly. Her. It will be offensive to the guilty. I stand on truth, and I stand with Officer Christopher Schur. I stand with the Grand Rapids Police Department. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let, uh, let, her, let her speak, even if you don't agree with her. She has a right to be heard and share her opinion. See if I can get this out in 180 seconds. <clears throat> How you doing, everybody? My name is DeAndre Jones. Uh, I want to talk about paintings, painting narratives on people. This is the only time I'm going to address this publicly because people have tried to slander me publicly, so I feel it's the best way to do it. So I like to talk about this picture of uh, some activists took uh, off of my Facebook page when I was in a police car at the DeVos place when they had the car show. And I was in several foreign cars, but I just happened to be a committee member for the West Grand and that uh, that police car was happened to be by the booth that I was in. I watched 20 white people, parents with their kids getting in the front seat, in the back seat getting in the front seat of a police car. So the one time I jump in a police car, I get a Picasso painted on me. I don't know how many people buying it, but I'm not buying that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just happened to get in a police car after seeing several white people get so comfortable and go up in, up in this police car. People take, you know, my pictures. Y'all didn't read the comments. Y'all didn't read the jokes that me and the community had said, several people that actually know me. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to address that. Then Zakari Richardson, who called me a coon, the last meeting in the comments, like I'm a coon. But I just, but I just recently had, when I had to go, when I had to go to court for, um, for him pointing a shotgun at somebody here at the city government building, it wasn't the spiritual teachers of Farrakhan. It wasn't the spirit of the Black Panther. It was me actually saying that I didn't want to testify against this guy and the other guy that didn't want to testify against why that charge was dropped because I really don't want to see people in the community getting charged. You know what I'm saying? But people need to be held accountable for their actions. But I'm a coon, though. You know what I'm saying? I'm a coon. I'm not a coon. You know what I'm saying? That's very disrespectful. I take that very disrespectful. And I, I listen, I just did 67 pull-ups at the Marine Challenge when 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 let when him, the Hispanic Festival was here, when it was here. You know what I'm saying? I'm a very strong person. I promise you, like y'all can talk and joke and all of this, but when it really comes down to it, when it push comes to shove, I guarantee you're not gonna like my push. You, you the police gonna be your best friend that day. I can promise you that. So that's not a threat. Let that's not a speak. threat. Let, he I has said the right if push to comes heard. to shove. I'm not going to be the person that tries to antagonize again, people. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to be to peaceful leave. about it. But I know y'all don't want those problems. So please stop trying to paint P Picassos on me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Stop trying to paint these narratives on me. Because I'm just addressing the community how people have tried to address me. You know what I'm saying? But I've been doing a lot of great community work. I was just at a summit. I was on the South East Promise Summit. Uh, I was able to give community feedback and I was able to, you know, be, be able to get my ideals and things that I talk about in the community implemented. And if you guys need a job, if you have a felony, uh, go to Link Up. They have resources. They have jobs. And I, if you want to get paid to come to these city commission meetings and voice your opinion, the fellowship is started for Link Up. Apply for that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Others wish to be heard. My name is Emma. I just want to thank you for saying that you got paid to be here. Um, so, Viola, Viola, um, how dare you use God to justify your hatred? 
How dare you? The God that I love and commit my heart to and a God who is love and whose heart hurts for the people who are dying and bleeding in the streets. How dare right, you I'm demonize you God? Us. I am talking. Not anyone else in the audience. You have to address us. What she said I affects this whole community. I know and you, you are, can disagree, but she has a right to be heard. Are you going to give me my seconds back? Did you pause that? He did, he he did pause it. So, okay. But address us, not, don't direct comments to people in the audience. It's not appropriate. She directed all of her comments about what she was saying she about us. Let, okay, so I take it back. I take it back. It wasn't about Viola. It's about anybody who says those things. There we go. Anybody who says those things is wrong. Is that about the community now? I don't understand your problem. Um, you, Melinda Yasasi, um, last com uh, commission meeting, you talked about fear, about how your husband or somebody is afraid um, for you every day. Um, let me tell you what fear is. Fear is being <clears throat> pushed to the ground and watching as your friends' faces are shoved into the ground and knowing you can do nothing to help them. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll get arrested. Knowing that... Um, one of them got a concussion and you couldn't do anything to help them. Anything. And then, then they get taken to jail and got misgendered. And, and we're not allowed to see um, medical help to, to, you know, if you get a concussion, you can get a brain aneurysm if you go to sleep somewhere and you're not seen. You, you know? Fear is is walking out in the streets and s being terrified every time a police car walks by because now they know my face because I spoke up too much. And knowing that that fear is a fraction, a fraction, the tiniest amount of what my BIPOC comrades face, what any BIPOC person in this city faces, that fear is death. You don't like getting yelled at? Nobody does. Nobody does. I don't understand why you think you're unique in that way. I don't think why, understand why anybody thinks you're unique. It's not fun to be yelled at. There are consequences for not doing your job correctly. People get mad. That's what happens. You didn't get arrested, though. You didn't get physically battered. I, you know, I, I got a rug burn. That was my first badge um, for, for standing up for what's right. And I was glad to have that. You, you can't handle, look at this, look at, I'm so sorry, I didn't know you were behind me. Um, you got all these barriers, you're so terrified, we haven't touched you once. I've been touched, I've been pushed around. I didn't deserve that, No, nobody deserved that. We've been traumatized, don't you dare talk to me about fear ever again. All right, others wish to be heard. Hi, welcome. Jim. Michael Jenkins. Uh, Madam Mayor, commissioners, audience. Um, yeah, make sure your comments are directed towards us. I was compelled, kind of, sort of, to come to this meeting tonight. And I really wasn't prepared to hear anybody come and vilify young man that was shot to death by one of your officers. That's really a low blow. And for you to allow that to continue, Mayor, was not, I don't think, justice for that young man. Uh, I don't uh, envy the task that you all have right now to uh, discharge your duties. You've already said that, um, well, officers sure is wrong. We fire him. So what if he quit it? What then? Does he get his job back? Are you wrong for firing him? Uh, and if you have this prosecutor that's going to be reluctant in prosecuting this officer, he's not vigorous. He's not going to be vigorous, it doesn't seem like. Okay, so we have to wait. Patrick has to wait. His family has to wait until it goes to federal court where they'll stand a better chance of this guy getting convicted. Because it doesn't look like he's going to have a good chance of getting convicted here in western Michigan. 
with uh, the Donald Trump supporting type people and Grand Rapids. Uh, it's easy. I could see it very easily where they'll have one, at least one juror. It's not going to ever convict this guy. I see a couple of officers here. Nobody's ever said, went through and polled your police officers. Do you also agree that this was a bad shoot? You know, because I think you can make a training video out of this particular shooting. If any officer agrees that that's a good shoot, he shouldn't be on your police force or any police force. That's just, that's just my personal feeling about this. Yeah, and, and you can't, uh, Mr. Mr. Manager, you can shake your head now, okay? I'm going to tell you something. You can stand up and say in public, well, we can't talk about that right now because we got litigation, pending litigation. Well, every time off Ben Crump and Vin, Vin Johnson or whatever his name come around, you might as well get your checkbook out because you need to make this family whole. You can't bring their son back, but at least you can let them have some comfort financially. I don't care what it takes, but you need to approach them, not wait for them to have to come here with their attorney. Thank you. Justice for Thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your comments. Th th thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Grace, um, and I'm from Grand Rapids, lived here my whole life. Um, and when I tell people that I come to these commissioners meetings and all that stuff, they're like, yes, period, like involved in local politics, go you. But it's embarrassing. To me, it is embarrassing that I have to be here. It's embarrassing that I feel like I need to be here. It's embarrassing that I, a person who has not even graduated high school yet, feels that I am have more common sense than most people on this board and more compassion for the people in my community. Um, you are here to represent the people in our community, but I don't feel that, and I'm in the community. I'm a youth in the community. I know Mayor Bliss, you have the mayor's youth commissioners, and you better hope I not join that. I'm just letting you know now, but um, it seems like you don't care or you don't even like us. You're all sitting here and you look bored. You're rolling your heads. You're looking down at stuff. It's embarrassing. It is. It's embarrassing that our city has been getting negative attention because of the things that you guys and the police department has done. I would like Grand Rapids to get attention for all of our amazing community projects and all the progress we're making, but we're not. We're getting it for the mistakes that are being made here that are common sense. It's embarrassing to see the police officers back there looking down at their phones the whole time. So much of the stuff that gets discussed involves them and they're not even paying attention. It's embarrassing. I'm in high school, there are kids here who come up here and talk to you. A kid should not have to tell you common sense things. A kid has a better attention span, apparently, to pay attention during this than the police officers sitting back there. It's embarrassing to know that there are people in our community who don't understand the injustices that are happening full adults full adults that don't understand what's going on right now. I understand why people feel embarrassed by their government or don't have trust in local government anymore. And I'm not even out of high school yet, and it's embarrassing, and I understand now. So thank you for that. Thank you. All right, others wish to be heard? Hi, I'm Mark, I'm from Grand Rapids. I'm sorry, I, I know you want me to deal with you, but I'm sorry, I have to go there. But the individual who's talking about good versus evil and all this stuff, come on. You don't have the brains to start a piss-ass motorcycle. Okay, but Mark, do direct, you can disagree with comments and express that, but direct them to us and don't call people out. Yes. Patrick Miller has had runs with the law, but that does, but that doesn't warrant him to be shot in the back of the damn head. And remember this: there's another person who had felony, two felony domestic violence convictions. She was a Tulsa cop who killed Terrence Crutcher. 
you don't talk about that. If you, Samuel Christopher Shore, you are an enabler. Period. End of story. If you stand with rogue cops, you are an enabler. Like the guy down in Mississippi, handcuffed, beaten by a cop, handcuffed, while handcuffed. Then handcuffed his brother for recording him. Not good. And the Mississippi, the, and the grand jury in Mississippi, who decides not to indict that old geezer woman who lied about Emmett Till being killed. Below, not good. You better be careful. Because what goes around comes around. You better look out for your neighborhood. With all the child, because you might have people who involved in child porn, child molestation, child abduction, incest. Because your neighborhood ain't squeaky clean either. Now, like I said before, I support good cops, but not bad cops. This is why the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act has to be passed by Congress. But that, but but that fool Tim Scott has to they had to kick him off his butt. I hope we get it passed. Period. End of story. Remove J. Edgar Hoover's name from the FBI building. Remove George Wallace's name from the Tunnel Movie of Alabama. This is for Patrick Lee Order, Jay and Walker, Jamari and Robinson, and Free Brittany Griner. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. All right. Others wish to be heard? Hello. My name is Mindy, and I live in Grand Rapids. So breaking the law is evil. Did you know that being day drunk in public is against the law in some parts of our country? We could decide that here in Michigan and then our elected officials would be evil. Do they deserve death? Um, does anybody know how many children are wards of the state here in Michigan today? You can't afford to feed your foster kids already, so no baby boxes, okay? Also, nobody made you sit in those seats. That was your own choice. John, Roslyn, Mindy, and the rest of you. Nobody is forcing you to be this official. You decided this. You cannot clock out. You are here to serve the public from the time you open your eyes, from the time you lay down and go to sleep, and I hope you're dreaming of how to make your community better because that's what you decided to do. Justice for Patrick. I hold my time. Part time, yeah, I'm taking all of my time. Part time. You hate your jobs as if you can't afford to take a, a week off to find a new job. You know, there are some people that can't afford to take a week off. They can have attitudes in the McDonald's drive-thru. You can't. 
If people leave their jobs to go and find another one, they might lose their housing. You can get up and go and not come back. Thank you. Others who wish to be heard? So nice to see you, Anita. After you bailed and gave, after you wanted to give yourself a raise, you couldn't face nobody after that. I totally understand. Part time, what was it? Close to 300,000 or was it a little over? I can't remember. I keep mixing the two numbers up with you two. Uh, I wouldn't be able to face us either. Damn. That's a lot of money for part time. I don't, I think I make working full time well over minimum wage. I think I don't even scrape 40000 Ain't that crazy? You don't want to vote to give me a raise that doesn't have to stretch over three to four year span with cents going up? You don't want to give me that raise so that I could, I don't know, even a hundred grand. Even 75 would be nice. I'd be out of poverty if I, let's see, I'm married, 150,000 would take me out of poverty according to the government. Would you vote yay to give me a raise? <laughs> hmm? Probably not, because then you'd be too scared that that money would trickle out of your pocket. Miss Mindy, girl, <laughs> that neck snapping, did it hurt? Did you have to go to the chiropractor office and like be like, I need to be readjusted because my job is stressing me out? Uh, damn, girl. I never seen no much neck snapping up there. It was unbecoming. Kurt, I see you. I'm going to keep my eye on you. Rosalind, I voted for you. That's why I'd be so angry up here. I was young, I was gay. <laughs> you know, you played into it. I'm like, damn, I'm gonna have to. I gotta marry my wife and have kids and have that security, right? Played into it. No one in the back of my head, it's gonna be like, Ugh, she's gonna be bought out. They all are. And then it came true. And then I got pissed off because you allow people to come in here with Proud Boy, AKA KKK garments on, spewing their hatred upon the deceased killed by your own GRPD. Hello. I would say some crazy things, but I have a case on me because I'm an activist here in Grand Rapids, facing multiple felonies because you guys are scared of people's words. No mind that I have a family. I'm glad that my words do scare you that much. And I hope that you buckle up for the fight <laughs> because you didn't scare me. You will never scare me. <laughs> I have children to raise in this country and you will not. Thank you, your time's up. Thank you, your time's up. All right, others wish to be heard? Hi, welcome. My name is Master Brewer. I'm from Grand Rapids, born and raised. This is my wife, Margaret Brewer, my two daughters, Masai and Myrie. Uh, I wanted to speak on one thing. I'm not here to offend anyone or anything like that. I uh, got here a little late, uh, so I don't, I'm not even sure what happened uh, with the, uh, the, the thing about the grant for Network 180. I uh, just wanted to say we all know mental health is a serious situation. We got mentally ill citizens, we got mentally ill uh, police officers, we got mentally ill government officials, we got mentally ill doctors that treat the mentally ill. Okay, but um, yeah, they should get money. I think they should get money because it's a serious issue and it's not something to be played with or laughed at at all. Uh, however, specifically speaking about Network 180, I think, and I just wanted to say, there needs to be extreme oversight extreme oversight that they're not being abused and manipulated because I know for a fact that they are. On uh, December 29th, was it the 29th? 31st. 31st, New Year's Eve. I'm chilling with my family on the porch having a good time. Wyoming police comes by and picks me up 
they got a uh, they got this here signed by Honorable Judge Murkowski. Uh, you know, to pick me up and have me evaluated mentally. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, I go to the hospital. Five minutes later, the doctor says, shh, unfounded, dismissed, as you can see right here. Uh, complaint unfounded. It don't take long to realize you're not talking to a fool. And I'm that guy that's not that fool. Okay. And uh, all, this was manip uh, all this is organized and orchestrated by Christopher Sane, who's been attacking my family for a while. But, you know, that's an, I'm not here to talk about that. But if he's going to be able to manipulate 180 and people and judges and things like that to where we're living. I mean, you know, I, I feel bad about Patrick Loyola. Loyola, I don't know how to pronounce it. But, uh, shit, the, shoot, the people attacking me look like me. And that's a problem. Especially if you're just going to give grants and there's no oversight. Right. So, you want to say something, baby? I do. Because not enough is done. Ma'am, can We're together. Uh, okay, do you want me to start the clock at three minutes? That's fine. So, why don't we? And then, That's can, you start, fine. Yep. can you start with your name, please? Yep, Margaret Brewer. Okay. Born and raised in Grand Rapids. So, like my husband was saying, documents are being signed, people are being manipulated. Families are being destroyed because you guys aren't doing your job or making sure that people are looking into things. So somebody can go and to the court with a bunch of lies and disrupt everyday life. We don't get paid when we have to stop work early because somebody made up a lie and you guys okayed it. Your judges okayed it. You made it okay. There's lies on here saying that they tried to have this individual, to have my husband examined. Nobody contacted us. No, nobody contacted me. Nobody contacted my husband. They obviously knew where we lived because they came to our house. We go to work every day. We pay our taxes. We're not breaking the law. We're raising a family. These are only two of our kids. We're raising two young black men. Brown. Brown men. <laughs> 18 and 21. And I don't want somebody else, anybody's family, to be disrupted because someone's job isn't being done. Because Network 180 will say, okay, I don't feel like doing my job and I'm gonna just sign this paper and y'all can go and pick them up and take them to the hospital. And then they want our insurance to cover it. I don't think so. So, yes, give Network 180 the money because, yes, there are people that need help. But find those people that need help. Make sure the people that you're trying to help actually need help. Make sure the people that you have in place to give that help are qualified to give the help. Because... <laughs> I can go and say, any of you, oh, they're crazy, and they said this, this, and this, and I want you to sign this paper, and I want you to go pick them up. How would that make you feel? New Year's Eve. You trying to enjoy your family, but instead, you're sitting in a hospital. So it's understaffed. It's during COVID. It's a holiday because somebody didn't do their job. They just signed their name on the line and then somebody else higher up didn't do their job. They signed their name on the line too. The police officers that came to the house knew that it was a bunch of bull. They knew it. They talked to my husband. The doctors talked to my husband. They talked to me. We told them that it's all lies. I called down to the court and said, what can we do about this? She said, oh, you can come and file a petition, but it really doesn't do anything. Charge the people that's lying. Make, put that into place. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. And I just want to uh, apologize real quick. When I said it don't take long to, to uh, know that you're not talking to a fool, I didn't mean to imply that people with mental health issues are fools. Thank you, sir. I did not mean to imply that. Yeah, thank you. All right, others wish to be heard? You want to say something, baby? No. <laughs> Team 
My name is Donnie, and I'm from Grand Rapids. Today, I would like to I would like to speak on I would like to def, I would like to speak on defunding and reallocating money from GRPD, and here's why. Because we cannot reform or policy our way into the protection of the communities in which they give oath to protect. Justice for Patrick Leoya, first and foremost. Ashe, 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 justice for Patrick. The reason why I'm, why I suggest and demand the defunding of GRPD and the reallocation of that money is because proper and mit or misused, misutilization of funds we give them $56.4 million last fiscal budget. I believe Kirk Ruppart has been trying to vote against giving them more money. I believe that everybody up here has been silent. Everybody else up here has been silent on that. John O'Connor, I'm not, I'm not counting you at, on anything because you're, you're a, you're a, I'm done. So defunding GRPD means that reallocation. I'm going to keep saying it. It seems like I'm not saying anything because of reallocate, 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 reallocate. I'm living in your brain rent free now. So, okay. Reallocating, de reallocating funds because we can't policy our way out. Policy number 11.1 of 11.0 of the use of force of GRPD says that Employees shall use only a responsible amount of force in the performance of their duties and shall not do so in accordance to accordance with the Department of Procedures and the law. So, OK, so are we saying as a as a whole, as a city, as a whole, that the use of force against Patrick Leoya was justified? Are we saying that? Because that's what you're saying by not addressing what actually happened. Because, OK, just because just because. Just because somebody has been committed or, or convicted of a crime does not mean that they deserve to be shot in the back of the head that's against procedure. We do not have a procedure. We don't have a procedure that is being able to be in our direct protection, which is why I'm coming up here and continuing to tell you that. So my suggestion is not only to defund and reallocate that money from DRPD, let the community have continuously those fundings. And then also, justice for Patrick. Thank you. Others wish to be heard? All right, is anyone else? Yes, I'm gonna... All right, I'm going to close this public hearing if people don't come up to the podium. So if you are. OK, let him speak. He has a right to. Don't yell at people. No, Mr. Scott, hold, hold on a minute. Yelling at people while they're coming up to speak or standing in line is not acceptable either. Step. I Stop, stop interrupting and let him speak. It's disruptive. Go ahead, Mr. Scott. Uh, Daniel Scott, once again. This is what the Word of God says, the Holy Christian Bible. This act does the Lord hate. Yes, this act is an abomination unto him hands that shed innocent blood. I'm just going to read from the testimony of Dr. Tony Lavatino. In his own words, he was a obstetrician gynecologist who was personally responsible for murdering over 20,000 babies through what's called abortion. This is one procedure he used. Your patient is 17 years old and she is with child for 20 weeks. At 20 weeks, her uterus is up to her umbilicus, and she's been feeling her baby kick for the last two weeks. If you could see her baby, she would be as long as your hand from the top of her head to the bottom of her rump, not counting her legs. 
Your patient is now asleep on the operating room table, and with her legs in stirrups, upon entering the room after scrubbing, you dry your hands with a sterile towel and are guided and gloved by the scrub nurse. The first task is to remove the laminaria that had earlier been placed in the cervix to dilate it, sufficiently to allow the procedure you are about to perform. With that accomplished, direct your attention to the surgical instruments arranged on a small table to your right. The first instrument you reach for is a 14-inch French suction catheter. It is a clear plastic and about 9 inches long. It has been bored through the center approximately 3 quarters of an inch in diameter. Picture yourself introducing the catheter through the cervix and instructing the circulating nurse to turn on the suction machine which is connected through clear plastic tubing to the catheter. What you will see is pale yellow fluid that looks like a lot like urine coming through the catheter into a glass bottle on the suction machine. This is the amniotic fluid surrounded the baby to protect her. Later, you take an instrument much like this called a sulfur clamp and you begin to insert it into the cervix. It's a blind procedure and you begin to tear out first an arm then a leg. Finally, all that's left is the head. And you open that clamp as far as you can inside the womb. You push down, you crush it, because that's the only way it will fit out of the uterus. Many times I had to do this, over 20,000 times, and once in a while, when I placed the head on the table, the face was looking right at me. This is the murder of children. All right, your time's up. Mr. Scott, your, t Mr. Scott, your time is up. It's like your time is up. Time's up. Stop. Okay, let him. All right, we're going to we're going to close our public comment period. And I'll turn to my colleagues. I'll start down here. No, we're we're closing public comment period. I'll start down here with Commissioner Moody. It it is commissioner's chance to speak. Commissioner Moody. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I would like to address the comment that was made earlier today in reference to uh, Mr. Loyola's background and past. It's inappropriate for anyone to assume because someone has a past history of being arrested that they have a right to die. I am not in favor of that. And that comment is inappropriate. Let him speak. Let that him speak. comment is inappropriate and none of us should take the opportunity to use that as a mean to degrade anybody of any race and of any cultural background. I'm done. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you Commissioner Moody. Appreciate you saying that. Uh, you Commissioner Jones. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I want to first of all thank everyone for uh, coming and for your uh, remarks throughout the course of the evening, uh, both uh, during both public comment opportunities. I want to take a moment also to address um, the item that was passed uh, earlier this evening around uh, cure violence. I do agree uh, with what was said earlier from one of the uh, commenters that um, cure violence is but a small you know, part of the, the solution, ultimately. Um, I happen to have leaned heavily on cure violence based on the results that it has been able to um, uh, create uh, or that have come by with cure violence in other parts of the, the country. And I know that um, ultimately uh, to get at the issue of community violence, it is around root cause and the fact that um, there's just a need for uh, more efforts to go into everything from um, trying to get at community violence, but also more importantly, to try to prevent. So opportunities around prevention are are critically important. Uh, but I look at cure violence right now as being something that is critically important at this point in time uh, based on what's happening um, in our community with our uh, young sons and daughters in the community. And uh, my hope is that cure violence will be something that can, uh, can stir other um, uh, initiatives that will also address it, along with, as has been mentioned, the critical need to focus on root cause, which again, ultimately, I think is uh, is the answer. Um, also, want to take a moment to lift up and ask, uh, just uh, send out uh, uh, love and respect to 
a brother by the name of Marcel Price, who lost his wife, Nika Price, on last week. She was a, uh, a dear soul in our community, um, very active in our community, and uh, 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 died by way of um, her fight with cancer on last week at a very early, at a very young age. So I just wanted to send out some of my love to, uh, to Brother Price and the family. So thank you, Mayor. Yeah. Thanks, Commissioner. Appreciate that. Commissioner O'Connor? All right. Uh, Commissioner Rappart? Thanks, Mayor. I just uh, want to reiterate that we're going to have a, we're going to try something new this month. So on the 23rd, we're going to be at Sibley Elementary, and we're going to start at 530. And so this is a frustrating setup, but that will be a setup where we'll be able to, to dialogue with each other about around tables. You know, I heard tonight people talking about public safety, housing, community engagement, and communications, and mental health. Those are all the kinds of t table topics that we're going to have, so I encourage you to come, and I look forward to having a chance to talk talk one-on-one, -on -one, face to face in small groups about those things, and hopefully that'll inform the work that we do heading into this fall as we set our priorities for next year. Thanks. Thanks, Commissioner. Commissioner? Thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you all for coming out tonight. Um, last week we celebrated National Night Out, and many of us had a chance, as well as staff, to go to different neighborhood associations and to connect with individuals. Um, so thank you to the neighborhood associations that put that, that good work on and the volunteers of those associations. Um, I also wanted to just lift up, we in our last SAFE meeting had an update from Puertas Abiertas. Um, one of the organizations was that was one of our SAFE task force winners um, that are working directly with families around um, domestic violence issues, mostly with young people. Um, and Andrea, who is the ED, um, is also recognized um, as an Athena winner this year and highlighted a, a, a number of, of good work that she's doing with families, with other volunteers, um, therapists. And um, so I wanted to highlight that to colleagues in the community. That presentation is available um, on our website as well and happy to share that. Um, they're a group that started off just sort of one-to-one -one people wanting to connect and has really um, exceeded the expectations, especially on the safe side. Um, there were a number of things tonight that were really hard to listen to. I agree, Commissioner Moody, um, the comments about um, Mr. Leoya's um, background and things that he may or may not have been arrested for um, are not a reason that someone should die by the hands of a uh, police officer. So that was, was very hard to hear. I also think, Mayor, I don't know. I know we um, have talked a lot about communication and sharing, I um, am deeply disturbed by the comments regarding um, health care procedure, abortion, and um, I would ask that the city attorney um, follow up with us to see what is, where is the point um, for free speech, but also the point where things are triggering, are disturbing, and are really not also, while I can talk about my personal beliefs off this dais are not uh, germane to the work of this board, yeah. this body. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. I know it's it's a hard it's a let it's a it's a hard balance, Commissioner. Um, uh, there, I asked the city attorney that very thing, and uh, it's a really hard balance with uh, free speech and the content of the speech and what we can and cannot allow in this space. Uh, but I. I share your concern for a number of comments, and I'll follow up. Thank you. I, our our I options may be limited. I just want to say that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, City Clerk. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I just wanted to um, say um, it's hard to believe we're already a week past um, the primary election. Um, we had a uh, everybody got to vote. Everybody that wanted to participate got to, to participate in a. Um, in safe and fair elections. The county canvas is still, um, the canvasser board are, are still working on their um, canvas. Just um, just so you understand, just for the public to understand procedure, we, you know, the, we had the primary for, for governor and for U.S. House, state senate, state house, and county commission. Um, next will be um, the uh, county convention, or the both Re Republican and Democratic Party will be having their county conventions to elect delegates to go to state conventions that will be the, make the nominees for Attorney General, Secretary of State, Supreme Court, and all those wonderful education boards we find on our long ballot. 
and then um, following that, then we'll have the November election. So um, obviously we'll have Grand Rapids Public Schools, city elections on that, on that ballot. So and there will be um, proposals as well. Um, so be looking forward for um, absentees and um, that period opening up about in the beginning of September. Yeah, thank you. And also on the ballot is an important question that will uh, allow individuals to vote to protect a woman's right to choose. Uh, city Attorney, City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. I want to um, thank the staff for all the work um, that you've done to help prepare us for the meeting. As I look over the agenda, lots of good work today around um, housing, around safety, around environment and uh, mobility, among many others. And I want to let you know how pleased I am with uh, all the staff work that has gone to prepare for today. I also had the privilege uh, this past weekend to spend time uh, at the um, African Festival as well, uh, sponsored by the Glimpse of Africa. I want to thank Frida for her continued work and all our community partners in that in helping us further appreciate our immigrant and refugee community, especially in light of uh, Patrick Leoya's uh, death to be more intentional about making sure that we uh, continue to further outreach in that part of the black diaspora. I want to also thank the Hispanic, uh, West Michigan Hispanic Center for uh, their work in coordinating uh, the festival this weekend here on the Calder Plaza and a chance to spend time there as well. It's just been a real good week of engagement as we said earlier with the National Night Out and <clears throat> I too look forward to the continued uh, engagement. Um, at the first meeting, excuse me, the next meeting uh, out in the first ward. And uh, Commissioner Repart mentioned it does start at 5.30, but we'll, we'll continue that engagement until about 7, then uh, pick up with the voting items uh, and the business of the commission. So thank you so much. All right. Thank you. We're adjourned.